Liz, why don't I turn things over to you? It looks like first item on the agenda is town meeting date, time, location, discussion. Sure, so this was to revisit the discussion from last week and get kind of a final confirmation if everybody is still satisfied with our town meeting date of June 17th, um, beginning at seven o'clock p.m. to be held at the Dennett School. Um, there had been some discussion about considering different venues, even proposed outdoor venues. Um, so either way, we just kind of need to get some closure on that so that we can move forward. Okay. All right. Um, and I should have said this before, but why don't we go around the horn and um, everyone um, that's on the call, um, it's, introduce yourself. I'm Christine Joy. John Trina. Liz Dennehy. John Wilhelmson. Mark Russo, still. <laughs> Bridget Paul. Martin. Paul Carcidi. Hello. Hi. Okay. All right. Sounds like that's it. Okay. All right. So um, we had, um, Liz, what do you think? we're just not sure with um, what the governor's order is going to look like. Do we really need to consider um, a different venue where um, like the Upland Club that we had thrown out? Uh, I don't know. The, I, last week I was kind of eager to consider picking a different venue because we are going to be in a predicament if we're unable to hold the meeting by June 30th. That said though, I was thinking more about it and I'm not certain that changing the location or the date or the time really makes a lot of sense. I'm wondering if we're better off going with Dennett at the same everything that we've already established and just make provisions to have multiple meeting rooms within that building and kind of start working on our plan for that now so that we can maintain social distancing we can require the face coverings for everybody, um, but that'll take quite a bit of work to figure out the spacing and all of that. So I'm wondering if our efforts are better spent working on that plan rather than worrying about alternate venues and rain dates and parking and things like that. I think we all agree with that. Okay. Yeah. All right, so it's already on the, um, the uh, the warrant, so there's really no votes need to be taken, right, Liz? No, no, it's just a discussion about. item in case you opted to change. Okay, Mark, what do you think? I I I think that's best, and I, I the part I like best about that is is we have to nail this down really really well. Uh, if for no other reason that John and I are really old and therefore in the high risk categories, but um, I beg your <laughs> all right, I'm really old. Um, um, but no, I, I think our time is much better spent just nailing it down and protecting ourselves and our citizens. So um, um, I feel good about it. And I, I think also just making the decision and having made it, we move on, makes sense too. You know, Beautiful. when we did the uh, PAC one, we had, uh, I, th I think that was the one, but I, I know we did one where uh, at that time Comcast was doing the cable and we had uh, it broadcast into the other room in the uh, gym. Uh, and John, I think you've said there's even other rooms so I think yeah. if we could get, you know, the cable people so that they can get the video and the audio to each of the different rooms that we select, then we're all set. True. Um, and I think true. you have a fair amount of space between, I mean, even spacing people out, you know, like you see in some of the graduations that they've done, you know, where there's a box for each thing or a chair in one spot, you know, you, you, you also have some people that will come that, our, our family and yeah. you don't necessarily need to space them out, right? But yeah, between that and the gym, I mean, we had, and it, and it wasn't, it wasn't uncomfortably full. We had 380 people there for the park in 2012. 
Yeah, so well, they're not they, going to, as, as excited I'm sure as people will be to be able to go to a town meeting, I, I highly doubt we're going to have numbers even approaching what we would normally get just because of everything that's going on, even in a month. Might so, be their first night out. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope they could do better than that. Yeah, I hope not. I hope not. But, but you know, we could also, I mean, I guess you could also, you, I mean, we, you know, you have, you have, uh, you have classrooms, you have the library, the two big spaces, of course, the gym and the auditorium, you know, okay. the but I think just between those two, you should have enough for the, for the potential of, of what I would expect to come. Great. Just, all right. So we're all set then with um, June 17th, 7 p.m. at the Dennett. And then yes. the election will be the following Saturday, the normal hours, I think, which are like, what, 8 to 8, something like that? I believe it's 8 to 6. 8 to 6. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. So check. Do, do we know if the election officials are, are comfortable with that, that they're going to have to work that day? I have not heard anything at all from Tricia in that regard, but I just made a note now to put her in touch with the Board of Health and things so that they yeah. make sure that they're planning for that election day and to conduct everything safely. So um, more on that to come. Okay. I'm I mean, assuming you could move some of those barriers too and move them into the Right. If those are if the barriers that you're putting up are movable, you could move and set it up so that it's yes. plexiglass. And and that one equally, if not more so, we're gonna to have to pin down every detail and keep ourselves safe and keep our citizens safe. Um, yes. There's a lot of planning that's gonna to need to happen over yeah, I, we just we have to just be ironclad, uh, pin down every detail. All right, great. All right, so um, Town Properties Committee, uh, just to five members. Do you John? Want, want to <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we had, we had a, a couple months ago, we had two members that, that resigned. Um, and so, you know, we had talked at, our, I think, our last meeting, which was, seems like, it seems like a long time ago. Um, that you know we were going to do some outreach and try and find some other folks with everything that's going on right now I think a better way to do this is for the short term is to just bring the group down to five so that we don't have any quorum issues and when we get to to the either to the other side of this or to what is our new normal and we kind of know what to do with that that then we can look to find additional members and bring it back up. I would like to add folks to this committee, but I just don't think right now is the time to be recruiting and trying to spend energy on that with everything else we have going on. So I'm, I'm sort of asking for this for a, as a temporary thing because I, I do think it would be good to have additional blood. I'm on the committee with John and I support this. I think he's right on. Okay, Mark, what do you think? Um, yeah, no, that sounds right. I, um... I, I would just throw out there, I, situations have changed a little, and I don't know if the two people that left may feel a little different about the degree to which they've been supported. And, um, I wouldn't mind going to them with hat in hand and just exploring if they were interested in coming back. I don't see a need for that, quite frankly, Mark. I, okay. You know, yeah. Okay, I'll just leave it out there as I... I, yeah. I uh, Maybe after this strangeness has died down, but we got, you know, we, we sort of got stopped in everything we were doing because of this. And I think uh, the, the five people who are on it want to work. And I just think we should keep going. And then as things relax and we can get back to whatever the new normal is, maybe then it makes sense. Okay. To approach them then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, sounds like we're all in agreement. Um, so I'll make a motion that we reduce the size of the town property committee from seven to five members. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, COVID-19 updates. So we've been working very hard um, with our emergency management team to come up with whatever physical alterations may need to be 
townhouse to facilitate eventual safe reopening to the public. And as part of doing that, um, we actually coordinated Steve Sorrow with a local carpenter and they are currently well underway converting some of the doors in the building to Dutch style doors um, so that you don't have people entering into the offices. They can conduct their business at the door. Um, likewise, for the offices that have countertops, um, the carpenter is in the process of constructing for us temporary um, plexiglass units that they'll stand, they'll take up the length of the counter, um, they'll be tall enough to provide a suitable barrier, and they will be off the countertop raised by about an inch or two, enough that you can pass papers back and forth underneath it. So that'll be for the offices with countertops. Um, we're in the process of coordinating with um, Tom Milius and Kathy in that office because they have kind of a unique setup there with two different entrances. And we're trying to figure out what makes the most sense. We could either reserve the front entrance, that's a dedicated entrance to that office. We could reserve that for employees only and have everybody go to the interior of the building and conduct their business at the Dutch style door that's already in place. Or we could do somewhat of an opposite arrangement and have that interior doorway be for employees only and have everybody conducting business with them to come by the front of the building um, and go into that dedicated entrance. And there is somewhat of a waiting area set up there anyway um, with a small window. So we're kind of weighing that out. Um, part of what will factor into that is that we're going to convert the main meeting room into a waiting area of sorts that will allow for social distancing. Um, the fire department has some very part-time people that are looking to gain a little experience. And so they'll staff it with one of them. And essentially when people come into the building, um, they are considering doing temperature checks. That kind of up in the air. So we're waiting to see what some of the other cities and towns are going to be doing in that regard as far as screening everybody. Um, if we do that, it would pertain to employees as well. So anything that we do or we implement that would affect the public, the employees will all be held to the same standard. Um, so similar to the face coverings, everyone will be required to wear their face covering if within six feet of anybody, communicating with the public, um, so same thing if we do opt to do the temperature screenings. Um, but that said, we're already well underway setting it up so that, you know, you would enter there, you would say what business you needed to conduct. And then we're going to have a little paging system where the person from the fire department would say, okay, you know, you have somebody for the treasurer's office that's coming down. And they'll send them down just to make sure that for some of the higher foot traffic offices, like the tax collector's office, for example, that we don't end up with six people in there all jammed in there waiting at the counter. Um, and we also wanted to alleviate a bunch of people needing to stand around in the hallway. So we feel like this is kind of a good system that should, should work. Um, we don't anticipate reopening the Council on Aging office for the foreseeable future. We're waiting for the governor's um, announcements on that. So in the interim, we had to make some adjustments in our financial offices to make it a safe environment for them and where it is a higher traffic area in terms of customers. So temporarily, we're going to relocate the town accountant into the Council on Aging office and we're going to move the treasurer collector into the town accountant's office space. Um, just to facilitate some separation, but so that the, the bulk of customers coming there, they're not coming to see the town accountant. They're coming to see um, the treasurer collector or her assistant. So it'll just be the two of them in that office space. Um, they also have two separate entrances for that office. So we'll have one for the public to go in and out and then one for the employees to go in and out. Um, 
So we're looking at doing all of that and we're waiting to get a plan from the library that talks about any physical alterations that that building may require. And um, similar to that, we're also, we have Rob Furlot working with Steve Sorrow and the carpenter just to iron out sticker sales and to make sure that that can all happen at the highway office. Um, Rob had a good idea. He talked about getting like a portable cart that they would sell the stickers from. Um, so they're working that out down there. Um, I'm just don't want to miss anything. It's been a busy few days with this. Um, so one of the things actually it came up on an earlier call that um, John and I had is the idea of remote participation. We are considering that once the state of emergency is lifted, we're assuming that the relaxation of the open meeting law requirements will either be lifted with that or they'll ask for it to stay in place but may modify it somewhat. But in any event, we think it would be a smart idea if in advance of all of that, if we get some clarification from town council and find out if maybe the board of selectmen or if individual boards need to take a vote to facilitate remote participation. And what that would mean would be maybe for some meetings, you would only need a quorum of the board to be present at the physical meeting location. And then maybe the other members could participate remotely or town staff could participate remotely or even the public because even once things go back to normal, um, we don't want to make it so the public can't participate because maybe they're afraid to come out and attend a public meeting in a, in a space with a bunch of other people. So it would be nice if we could still continue the remote participation, even at a small scale, once all of this is kind of lifted, um, just in case some people are still, you know, if they feel it's unsafe to come out, um, just to give them another option to participate in the meeting. So that's something that we're looking at. Um, I intend to get more information from town council on that as far as what's required in the way of votes. And I'll present that back to you and see what we want to do with it. But I think it would be good for something like that if we could implement it sooner rather than later so that if the guidance that's currently in place about the virtual meetings is removed um, and no longer in effect that we still have some options available to us so everyone can safely participate in our meetings. It, it, that sounds really good to me. In the past, the problem, if it is a problem, had been that it had to be available to all boards and commissions and committees. Now, maybe it's gonna be different post uh, the crisis we've had, um, but that makes sense, and it particularly makes sense to give people options, maybe give high-risk individuals other options, but still leave someone on site, uh, um, which I think is an important piece as well. Uh, so I hope that moves ahead. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah I, think, I agree. Sounds good. Yeah, the remote participation, I think, is going to be a big part of the new normal. I, I, I think that's the way. I'd be very surprised if they don't allow that. And I think we should push for it. And maybe we should just check in with our, you know, our state rep and uh, senator just to make sure. I think that's a good idea to check in with them too. Um, both Senator Brady and Representative Lenatra have been very helpful to us. They've been very present and they're responding to any questions we have. Um, they respond to stuff sometimes multiple times a day. So they're very much engaged during this. So I think that's something that we should remind them of, that we hope One, even once things are relaxed, that they consider leaving some semblance of that in place. But at least if they didn't, um, if we take whatever steps we need to take on the local level to facilitate it, um, it would just make a big difference. I mean, yeah. even when during a basic selectmen's meeting, there are five of us normally that are all up there at that table. And then if you say, oh, well, we'll space the five of us all around the room. Well, then if you have to wave to get people's attention to speak, it becomes like, wouldn't it just be more efficient if 
maybe three of the five people were available on Zoom um, or something of, of that nature. One of the things I'm a little concerned about, though, is the Council on Aging. What, what is your th Is Joy going to share the office with uh, the town accountant? She will, yes, but the okay. plan is not to bring um, the most high-risk people like back. Um, we're actually going to move Barbara's entire setup. Yeah, so I, I'm just not, concerned she's that... She's not going to take over like Joy's computer. And I did talk to Joy about it, and she was fine with it. Yeah, no, I'm more concerned around, you know, a lot of the seniors either don't have or won't use the latest technology. Right. And how we can engage with them, because I think uh, some of the things Joy did received, you know, like the um, veterans luncheons, uh, things where she had uh, things, events going on for seniors were well received. Right. And I'd hate to see that just stop completely. I, I haven't got an idea how we work to go forward, but I think there needs to be some thought there. I'd be glad to help out with any of that. I agree. Um, and that would be great if you want to kind of help out with that and maybe brainstorm with joy. I'm hoping that there's more guidance released from the state later this week or early next week that helps us categorize some of these classes or groups, yep. like say yep. for instance, COA in the library, in my mind, those would come at a later phase, but I don't know what the state has in mind. They, for all we know, they could be thinking of the library and COA as a phase four, meaning like shouldn't be reinstituted until there's a vaccine, or they could consider that a phase two or a late phase one, you know, so it's, but I have to say though, um, Joy has been very good with the COA about still delivering essential services. So that's one plus. Although I do think people, like you said, John, are missing very much that social component. Um, but at least- There, there may be an opportunity to... with the library and the Council on Aging. Right. And maybe we could kind of at least get them to brainstorm a little together because they both face the same problem. Right. That would be a good idea too. And, and, and I, I know that there is, uh, you know, a hesitancy with technology, but I, I think we should poke at that a little bit and whether that's even some, you know, courses to teach. I mean, like, you know, we, we had our first, you know, month, you know, a few weeks ago, we did our first zoom call with my parents, right? They had never used it before. Yep. And, you know, and then we did it again for mother's day. And now she's using it for some of the stuff that she's volunteers on for scholarships and things like that. So, you know, it's because, yeah, that component is, is missing, but it's also the, one of the most dangerous things to do is to bring this group of people all together in the same oh, I room. agree. And so if you could fulfill that, at least with some of the folks um, in, in this type of environment, like we are on here, you know, at least it gives something. You know, so I know it's hard to do and, and some people just don't even have the technology to fully avail themselves of it. But, you know, you can do Zoom on a phone, you know, a smartphone, you can do it on a tablet, you can do it on a computer. And so I, I just think that's maybe a place where at least connecting some of the people and then maybe if some of them connect that way, maybe others will decide that they should try it too. Yeah, if we could get a few disciples to go out and, you <laughs> yeah. know. Exactly. Like Doc Cushman and a couple of others that, uh, you know, Dot's on Facebook, <laughs> swearing all the time. All right, so. uh, I agree with all that. And, but I also, I, I think we have to lead the charge in being conservative, I, particularly for seniors, um, in, in not encouraging them um, toward risky behavior. And even at the risk of irritating them or isolating them, um, uh, I, they shouldn't be spending a lot of time close together right now, and I don't think that's going to change in the summer. All right, so we'll keep this on our radar and try to find creative ways to um, to engage the seniors and possibly find a way that they we can help them uh, with technology. Okay, so Liz, thank you for the COVID-19 update. John, do you have anything for the school? 
Uh, just we're just relooking at budgets. Okay. And that's, you know, I know both Silver Lake had a meeting last night and another one tonight, and we'll continue to do that on that front. Um, and then we're also doing it um, from a debt perspective. Um, we did provide FinCom for their meeting tonight with an adjusted budget reflecting some of the things that we moved to the special town meeting as well as uh, the adjustments to the bus contract. Uh, but we're gonna have to, we'll spend some time over the next few weeks also looking for other places where we might trim a little bit. I mean, these are incremental cost cuts because there just isn't much, there isn't much fat in that budget and there hasn't been for years. So, but you know, we may be able to tweak a little bit from vocational because unlike normal, you know, we, you get the, the the budget is done before you get the final submissions for, for applications for the VOC program. So usually you have to leave a little buffer there, but that was May 1st now. So when we can still make adjustments to the budget and now we know how many people are going so we can do that. So we're gonna look for any places where we can to try and be as lean as we can um, uh, going you know, for, for the next year. But I think it's gonna be hard for FinCon to look at the two budgets without looking at them together. Okay, great. Thank you, John. All right, so next on our agenda is we've got the minutes from 4.30 and 5.6. So um, I, I took a look at those. Um, John and Mark, did you guys have a chance to read the minutes? I did. All right, do you have any, um, anything that needs to be changed or um, did you feel like we were, we were good to go on, the, on both of those? Uh, I'm okay with April 30. Uh, okay. I, do, I do have some changes on uh, the 6th. Okay, what about you, Mark? Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine so far. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, I'll make a motion that we accept the April 30th min minutes um, as submitted. A second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, all right, John, the five, six minutes, what do you have? Okay, um, so when we do the introduction to the minutes, we're repeating who are there, the people. I think we just need to say it one time. Uh, so th that would eliminate a paragraph roughly. Okay. okay. At the same time, um, we've got a lot. One of the things I want to see happen with these is that they go up on not only the town website, but the, uh, the Facebook page. And we've got minutes now that are written that are very, I think, very uh, human engineered, if you will. But they're full of acronyms. And I think three or four years ago, we said, you know, when we did acronyms, we'd always say what the first one is. Mm -hmm. So like we've got Board of Selectmen, BOS, and then we just use BOS throughout. That's fine. But we've got FEMA, we've got MEMA. I doubt townspeople would know what those are. We've got ATM. Some people might know that's annual town meeting, but I'm not sure everybody would. I think some places we've got, uh, we've got COLA now. Coal is cost of living allowance, but again, I'm not sure everybody. And I just think we ought to go back to the first time you use the acronym, spell it out, and then use the initials thereafter. And that's where most of my um, uh, things with the changes. There's one sentence on after Ring Road where it says minutes will be held for the 513-20 agenda. And I, I'm not sure what that meant. The minutes of April 30th will be held? Yes, that's what okay, it meant. Okay, so yeah. I think we ought to just say April 30th. So it's clear what we're doing there. And separate it from that paragraph because it's not really part of the ring road discussion. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it was separated, but it, yeah. And we could even okay. move it down to the end with the minutes. Other than that, um, I'm fine. I, I like move that down, John? Excuse me? Move that down. I think, um, and then clarify the 430 minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then okay. move down. Okay. All right, but so I think John. The minutes, I, I like them. I think they're well done. Thank you. All right, so do you want to make a motion that we'll accept the minutes with um, your amendments and you'll work it out with Bree? Yes, I'll make that motion. Okay, I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so Aye. we're current with minutes. All right. Um, did our guest have something that you wanted to say? <laughs> yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. My name is Paul Carcidi. I live at 28 Forest Street. 
been here seven years or so. Uh, and a, a problem has developed uh, in the past uh, week or 10 days. Uh, the pe pe people, a person who lives at uh, 32 Forest Street has created a retail store at uh, her property. And uh, I heard you talking uh, Facebook and it's under the name Hippie Pilgrim, H-I-P-P-Y-P-I-L-G-R-I-M. It is, um, they, they built a, over a course of three days, they built a pretty substantial uh, retail store uh, it's got a metal roof. It's got barn doors that close. She sells uh, anything from uh, s spices, garlic, salt, chocolate, uh, alcoholic beverage, um, prepared mixers, uh, numerous things. And, and it's a open uh, seven days a week, 10 to six. There's a big sign at the bottom that's probably two feet by seven feet. There's a big sign across the top with uh, uh, some of their offerings and time and stuff like this. And I know that Forest is a residentially zoned area. And uh, I, I don't, I went up to town hall and then on Mother's Day, they brought in heavy equipment and a crew of two and they removed part of their front lawn and made a parking lot for three cars. And, uh, you know, and made, of course, they worked all day and made a racket. And I went over and spoke to the, the crewmen and I got a lot of viciousness and aggression thrown in my face and I was told to get the hell out of some of my business. And uh, I n don't know of any application for a variance or anything, but I, don't, I do know that uh, Forest is a, a nice, quiet residential street. And now there's this garish retail store right next door to me, and I'm not too happy about it. And uh, I did go up to town hall Monday morning, I know I found it was you know, locked, but a woman came out and told me that I should uh, send a letter to John Milius. Oh, uh, Milius. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, and uh, at the address of building admin at plimptontown.org, which I did That's correct. on Monday. And uh, I haven't heard anything back, but I'm just really concerned uh, you know, this is, in my reading of the bylaw, a, a, a violation of the bylaw. It's, I'm not happy with it. It's uh, a residential street. And, you know, my neighbors and I try to keep our street nice. And this is, and I know this person, according to what I read on the Hippie Pilgrim Facebook page, sells these uh, concoctions and spices in local stores and at uh, uh, farmers markets, you can you know read her uh, Facebook page yourself and, and if you'd like and, and see what she does. I just feel, despite the fact of what we're all living under, you know, with the COVID, that's not uh, a valid excuse to violate the zoning bylaw and to you know, create this monstrosity and this, this, you know, improper and contraption on our street. You know, it's, uh, it's not right. And I, I just uh, don't want it to go on any longer. And if, uh, you know, you could take a look at it, or give me direction as to who I should speak to or, or what I'd be happy to do so, but it's, it's, uh, really bothersome. I know this person, I only know her as Susan, according to that um, Facebook page. Okay. Uh, they, he's been there about three years. Okay. Paul, why don't um, we have you get a hold of um, Liz, um, 
offline and um, she'll get your contact information and we can get Tom to get a hold of you. To, okay, uh, that'd be great. It. But How yeah, do I thank contact you. Contact Liz. Um, you can email me or even um, better yet, if you already emailed building admin, I'll just give them a call later tonight and ask them okay. to please follow up with you first thing tomorrow. Oh, that'd be great. And I'll give you yeah. my cell phone number. Um, feel free to you know give it to whomever you think. It's uh, 617. Well, I just know if you want it on um, your cell phone on a recorded meeting. Oh, never mind. No. Okay. <laughs> And is there um, a means to get in touch with you in the email that you sent? Yes, my, my email address is there. Okay, I'll make sure that they follow up with you by email um, first thing tomorrow. That's very kind of you. I appreciate it. Great. Okay, okay. well, thank you thank for coming you. on. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Oh, Bye -bye. Very good. Okay, okay so um, now being um, we have no further business, um, John or Mark or John Wilhelmson, do you have anything further? I, uh, I okay. just one thing while we're um, I saw that the uh, I don't know somebody's I saw that the uh, lieutenant governor is uh, saying that the community compact program is still in place and looking for people to uh, submit things that they want to keep it going and i know you got a lot going on liz i'm just wondering if there's anything we could involve colleen in there oh, colleen thompson yeah maybe i was going to reach out to her anyway um it seemed like she was just starting to pick up steam we had talked about joining that data right. network and then all this happened and then nothing really happened so i was going to follow up with her anyway um so if you want to forward that along maybe that's something that we could get her involved with yeah it's uh it's you know the uh thing that the department of revenue sends out right. kind yeah. Of, yeah i'll just forward that over to you if you want okay sounds good all right very good all right um being that we've got no further business i'll uh, make a motion that we adjourn and our next meeting will be um is it monday at six monday at at 5.30. Monday at 5.30. Okay, so we'll meet again Monday at 5.30. All right, so motion to adjourn. Uh, just a, a question. Okay, the, go ahead, Mark. The, meet, the meeting Monday, we'll be voting on the warrant articles, is that? Yes. Uh, yeah, um, okay. And Liz got us the, um, the final draft of the um, annual and special town meeting warrants today. Yes, and I'll get you the final version of the budget tomorrow. Beautiful, okay. The draft. All right. Liz, will um, you include me on the draft? Sure. The warrant? Thank you. Um, All right. And, and sorry, just, just back to the meeting Monday. Is that the one where we would be inviting the town moderator, or is that going to be a meeting further down the way? No, that'll be further down. We'll invite the moderator, the town clerk, and the town accountant and go over all the motions. Yeah. This is simply just to vote the recommendations so that you guys, okay. we can figure out signing it. I'll probably have you each sign one at a time and send it back to me, um, scan it back. And if anybody has a problem, um, I can help you with that. But this is just so Nate can get it off to the printer and, and all of that. Okay. Okay, are you good, Mark? Good. Okay, all right, uh, motion to adjourn. Do you have a second? So, mo so moved. All right, second, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Good night, everyone. Have a good, good weekend. <laughs>